Good morning, I'm Tom Robbins. I'm one of the pastors here at First Methodist Temple. Welcome to worship in our Praise and Worship Center today. It is a privilege to have you with us. And now some remarks from Pastor Brian. Good morning, church. It's so uh, wonderful to be in worship with you this day. We are uh, privileged that you would join us and, and take time to worship our Lord with us together. It would be a uh, uh, wonderful if you could let us know that you are, are watching with us today uh, in the comments. Uh, leave your family name there, the number of folks watching with you. That'll be incredibly helpful. Of course, it's always good to uh, click that share button so that this worship service can be made available uh, to more folks than those who are in your home today. Uh, we invite you to find a, a posture uh, which is comfortable for you as we begin our worship service. And uh, Dr. Carl Bradley uh, will prepare our hearts for worship together with our prelude. Thank you. this morning comes from the 96th Psalm verses 1 through 3. I invite you to stand as you are able and to follow along uh, with the words in your bulletin or on your screen in this responsive reading. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path that sinners tread or, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, 
which yield their fruit in its season. And their leaves do not wither. We invite you to remain standing as we sing together hymn number 529, verses 1, 2, and 5. Please stand, remain standing as we say our faith number 881 together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. come now to a time in our service where we have the opportunity to go before the Lord in prayer. I'd like to uh, commend to you our special member of the week, Maxine Moxfield. Uh, Maxine, as her address is listed on the last page of the bulletin there. Uh, Don has uh, died and, and gone on to be with the Lord, and so we hope you will write to her uh, to lift her up in prayer in these days. Uh, we celebrate with uh, the Good Fellows, as they mark their 60th wedding anniversary. And so we, we praise God uh, for their marriage, uh, for their love of one another, and their love of Him. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. O oh Lord our God, we gather here in this place. 
to lift our voice of praise to you. For there is no God like you. No God who would dare to love a people like us. No God whose faithfulness could never be questioned. So, Lord, shower your presence down on us, your people, this day, that we might know more of your never-ending, awesome love and mercy for each of us. Lord, we rejoice at the way in which you, indeed, are making all things new. We look around us and we see and we hear of your awesome wonders. You're making uh, relationships that were so far broken to be reconciled. You are making those who have been sick to be well. You are protecting those whom you love from famine and violence, disaster, and so many other ailments in this earth. Yet, Lord God, we look around and we see the perils as well. Perils which are a reminder for us that you created us not for this place, but to be in heaven with you in your presence. So create in us a desire in our heart that shall never end. A desire not for the world around us, its allures, or anything which glitters, but a desire to be with you for all of our days. And Lord, may our actions reflect the same. That as people get to know us, they would get to know more about you. God, we want to join your kingdom work here on earth in Temple, Texas, and even far across this world, where we can be your ambassadors and bringing hope and light to the world. Give us the courage and strength to do that, where we can join you in imparting a spiritual and physical healing upon all those in need of such things. May it be so. Lord God, we pray uh, for all those who find themselves uh, at the mercy of this virus before us. We pray for their healing and their recovery. Lord God, we pray that in these days you would draw near to them, that even in these difficult circumstances, uh, they might be able to see uh, your presence with them that they might be able to see the good that you are bringing even out of all which seems so very far from that. If we've known anything this week, if anything has been brought to light to us this week in our nation, in our country, it is that we so desperately need what you have. We need your peace. We need your patience. Lord God, we need your wisdom. And so remake our hearts. Make them more like yours. Help us to be more faithful followers of your son, Jesus Christ. So we pray these things and we continue with the words that your son first taught us as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We come now to the point in our service where we have the opportunity to go before the Lord to express our gratitude and our thanks for the gifts that have been given uh, for his ministry uh, here in Temple and beyond. And so uh, we invite you to join us in prayer in just a moment. And, and thank you for all those who continue in support of the church and its ministries, uh, for the glory goes to God alone. Uh, there will be uh, directions on your screen how you may uh, give online at fumctemple.org forward slash give. 
But you may also send your gifts uh, to the church office by mail at P.O. Box 773, Temple, Texas, 76503, and, and we will receive those as well. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, our God, you have called us to extravagant generosity, a generosity that you showed us first. And so help us to give so deeply and sacrificially as you have offering up the life of your only son, Jesus Christ, for the sake of the world. Help us not be so tight-fisted to the things of this world and its comforts. Help our hearts to look outward, to see the people you love, the people who have yet to hear of your never-ending and awesome love for them. And we pray that you would bless all the gifts that have been given and will be given that they might be used to lift up your name and no one else's here in our community and all around the world. We pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen.
you standing as you were able as we'll continue our worship together and preparing for Holy Communion as we'll sing together one bread, one body. There's three stanzas and we'll sing all three of them. making them clean and last week I didn't have anything to sterilize my hands and Ms. Laura said oh I have something and she pulled out this blue bottle and she squirted it in my hands and I don't know if you can see very well it's blue it's not clear and I looked at it and I thought 
if I put this all over my hands, if I wipe my hands together, does that mean my hands are going to be blue? Am I going to look like a Smurf? So <laughs> Laura, Ms. Laura told me, trust me, your hands won't be blue. So it was already in my hand, and I rubbed them, and I rubbed them, and I rubbed them, and did you know what? My hands looked just like they always did. They didn't turn blue, and that's how I know I can trust Miss Laura. Now, you can too, and as soon as you come back to church and spend time working with her, you're going to absolutely love her, and you can trust her. Now, I've been thinking a lot about trust lately. There is one that will never, ever, ever let us down, and that's God. We can go to God every day and tell God our problems and God will always, always be there for us and our brothers and our sisters and our parents and everybody else. God will never, ever let you down. And that's because God loves you more than anything. But some people don't know that. And that makes me very, very sad. And God wants us to tell others that he loves them. So in church, what we usually do is on the other side of the altar, you see that jar that has Tootsie Rolls in it. We would all say a prayer, and then I would give each of you two Tootsie Rolls, and you'd go out and share one and say, God loves you. We can't do that today. Pretty soon, I'm hoping we can. So today, after the prayer, just turn to whoever's in the room with you, your mom or your dad or your brother or your sister or whoever's there, and just say, God loves you. And when you do that, that makes God smile. So let's go ahead and say a prayer. Do you remember what you do with your hands? You put your hands together. And do you remember what you do with your eyes? You close your eyes and you bow your head and repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God thank you for loving me, thank you for loving me. and always being with me. Now, God, please help me to share your love with others. Amen. Okay, turn to someone in the room and say God loves you and know that when you get to finally come back to church, you're going to have a whole lot of time with Miss Laura and you are just going to love her. Bye-bye. Yes, ma'am. Scriptures today is from Proverbs 3. Happy are those who find wisdom and those who get understanding, for her income is better than silver and her revenue better than gold. She is more precious than jewels, and nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who lay hold of her. Those who hold her fast are called happy. The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the deeps broke open, and the clouds dropped down the dew. My child, do not let these escape from your sight. Keep sound wisdom and prudence, and they will be life for your soul and adornment for your neck.
Then you will walk on your way securely, and your foot will not stumble. If you sit down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of sudden panic or of the storm that strikes the wicked. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. This is the word of the Lord. Will you please be seated? Jim was a very wise old man. He had just retired. He had bought his dream home at the end of a street next to a junior high. It was the summer, and every day Jim had his routine. He would work in the yard, he would eat lunch, and then about 2.30 or 3, he would sit back in his recliner and drift off for a wonderful nap. And that happened all summer long, and then school started. The first day of school, when school got out, Jim had just reclined in his recliner. He had just closed his eyes, and three boys out of the junior high came running down his street, yelling, making a huge ruckus. They were banging every metal trash can they could find, and this startled Jim woke him up. And day after day after day, this was the routine. Jim would sit in a recliner, and just as he would drift off, these three boys from the junior high would run down the street and wake him up. Finally, Jim decided he really needed to do something about this. And the next day, as the junior high let out and the boys came running down his street, Jim stepped into the street in front of them. And he said to these three little boys, you know, hearing you make all this noise day after day after day makes me very happy because it reminds me of when I was your age and I had so much fun. So, this is my proposal. Every day you come down this street making as much noise as you can, hitting as many metal trash cans as you can, and I will pay each of you one dollar. The three little boys were thrilled to actually get paid to make noise, and day after day after day, they'd run down the street after they were released from school making an incredible racket. And every day, Jim would pay them a dollar. But after a few weeks, as the boys were running down the street, Jim stepped out in front of them, and he said, boys, because of the coronavirus concerns and the drop in the stock market, I don't have as money as I, much money as I used to have, so now I can only pay you 50 cents. Will that be okay? And the boys talked about it. They weren't thrilled about the pay cut, but they agreed to it. And day after day after day, they still came down the street making a huge amount of noise. And every day, Jim would pay them 50 cents. But then, one day, as the boys were coming down the street, Jim stepped out in front of them and he said, Boys, I'm sorry to tell you this. My Social Security check has not come yet and I can only afford to pay you 25 cents. Is that okay? And the head little boy said, you want us to run down this street every day banging trash cans, making a lot of noise for only 25 cents, only a quarter? I quit. And the other two boys quit too. And from that day on, Jim was able to kick back in his recliner as school got out, and they never woke him up again. Jim was a very wise old man. I want to talk to you today specifically about wisdom and what the Bible says about wisdom. Now understand, in Scripture, our Bible has 66 books in it, and there are all sorts of literature, all sorts of genres that you see here. You have history, you have law, you have prophecy, you have gospels, you have epistles, you have apocalyptic material, and you also have what is called wisdom literature. And these are five books that we have in the Bible. They are Proverbs, Psalms, the book of Ecclesiastes, the Song, 
of Solomon and also Job. These are the books that deal with the realities of our lives, the human predicament, what we encounter, and how do we live in this topsy-turvy world where there are so many things competing for our attention. What is the right way to live in a world with so many options? That's what the book of Proverbs deals with. Now, just understand where we are in our church right now. We have groups that are doing the B90 program, reading the Bible in 90 days. And as they progress through the Bible, the sermons have been keeping track of where they are. And with Proverbs, we're a little bit ahead, and there's a reason for this. This past week, our classes, or most of them, got through Second Kings. And I can tell you, after reading those last few books, they were pretty shell-shocked. They needed something a little calmer. So I decided to focus a little bit ahead and focus specifically on wisdom. Now, understand what wisdom actually is. It's not knowledge. It's not facts and figures and information because you can have all of that and still make the wrong choice. Wisdom is about making the right moral, ethical choice in a world that at times is incredibly confusing. If you remember a few weeks ago in church, what we looked at was the story of Solomon. Here's this young man who suddenly finds himself the king of Israel. And he knows he does not have the capability, he does not have the capacity to govern well. And he's scared. And in a dream one night, God says, ask whatever you want, whatever, and I'll grant it. Solomon doesn't ask for wealth. He doesn't ask for health. doesn't ask for fame. He asks for wisdom to God guides people. And that's what he is granted. And again, remember, wisdom is more than just knowledge. It's more than facts and figures and information. It's making the right choice, when at times it seems very difficult to do so. A very good example would be two women getting on a bus at the exact same time. The bus is very crowded and there's only one empty seat and the two women begin to argue, who should get this seat? And one woman says, well, I stepped onto the bus right in front of you, so the seat should be mine. And the other woman said, I'm much older than you. This seat should be mine. And they continued to argue. They were making no headway. They had reached an impasse. And the bus driver realized he couldn't pull the bus away from the curb until these two women had settled this. And as they continued to argue and gripe and complain and get louder and louder, the bus driver turned around from his seat and yelled back towards the two women, let the ugly one have the seat. The two women stood the rest of the trip, but they stopped arguing. The bus driver was incredibly wise. Now, in this pursuit of wisdom, the wisest of all people, King Solomon, this is what he says about wisdom. And this is a portion of what Mike read for us just a moment ago. My child, do not let these escape from your sight. Keep sound wisdom and prudence, and they will be a life for your soul and an adornment for your neck. Then you will walk on your way securely, and your foot will not stumble. If you sit down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of sudden panic or of the storm that strikes the wicked, for the Lord will be your confidence. Now, how do we, with all these different ideologies, all these different thoughts floating around out there in the world, how do we, followers of Jesus Christ, live wisely? It's obvious. It's by following the teachings of the one who saved us. Now, the corpus, the, the core of what Jesus teaches in the Gospel of Matthew, it's called the Sermon on the Mount. In the Gospel of Luke, it's called the Sermon on the Plain. It is the same thing. 
But after encapsulating what it is to be a faithful follower of God and of Jesus, he concludes the Sermon on the Mount in a fascinating way. And listen to what he says. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man. And then he tells this story. A wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell, and great was its fall. What Jesus is simply saying is, if you want to live a wise life in a world that is filled with confusion, follow my teachings. That's what he tells us. And what that means specifically for us in a world that would say most of it is foolishness. First, we forgive. We forgive when it is easy. We forgive when it is incredibly difficult because it is the wise thing. It is Jesus' will. We don't hoard. We are generous. We don't live an extravagant lifestyle when so many people around us are facing terrible deprivation. We think of others before we think of ourselves. We err on the side of grace. We are people of compassion. We are people of joy. We are people who understand that we have a purpose in this world, that God created us for a reason, and that the 70 to 90 years that most of us are allotted in this world, this time is precious. It is a finite commodity, and God expects us to do our very best with it. Now, did you notice in the story that Jesus concludes the Sermon on the Mount with the wise man building his house on rock, the foolish man on sand, the story doesn't say that if you build your house on rock, the storms of life will not come. They will. I wish that your life was just one filled with peace and joy and harmony, but that is not the human condition for any of us. So in the midst of this world where we face storms right now continually, the coronavirus, the political unrest, the racial divide, the economic concerns that are going on right now. In the midst of all of this, God wants us to live wisely. In just a few moments, here in the Praise and Worship Center, we're going to celebrate the Sacrament of Holy Communion I hope that you're going to do the same at home. Even if you don't have bread and juice, if you have Coke and crackers, that is fine. Because these are symbols of God's grace, God's love. I hope you'll participate. But when you receive the elements in a few moments, in your time of prayer, ask God simply to help you live wisely. And what we know is God always hears and God always answers. That is the good news and that is the gospel. Will you say amen? In the United Methodist Church, what we believe is that the elements on the altar belong to God, not to our church. They are signs and symbols of God's grace for all the world. And because of this, in church, we celebrate what is called open communion. We let anyone receive these elements because it's about God's love. It's nothing we earn, merit, or deserve. I hope that if you're not a part of our church and you're not used to celebrating the sacrament in this manner, that you would consider doing so. God loves you desperately, and he wants to be in communion with you. And one of the ways this happens is through the sacrament. The words to the liturgy are about to be printed on the screen. Will you please join with me?
Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. On the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Eat this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and he gave it to them and he said, Drink from this each of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. I ask at this time if you'll please come to the altar rail to receive the sacrament. And while the musicians and liturgists are coming forward, know that we are practicing safe Holy Communion. They have already been served there at each place. If you would, please go ahead and open your packet. And now will you receive the wafer. This is the body of Christ broken for you. And now will you please open your cup of juice. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And in your time of prayer, again, please ask God to give you the wisdom to make right choices in this very confusing world.
And now will you please bow for the table benediction. Having received the signs and symbols of God's grace, go in peace. Amen. We now come to the conclusion of this morning's worship service. This is the time of invitation. And uh, while it may seem very strange to offer an opportunity to join online, know that we're having quite a few people do this, which is genuinely surprising. This past week, a family joined. I've never even had the opportunity to meet them yet, but they're now part of our congregation. If God has touched your heart and you would like to be part of this portion of the body of Christ, if you would like to deepen your relationship with Jesus Christ, know that we really genuinely do want you here to live, to laugh, to learn, and to grow in this relationship with the one that matters most. We'll conclude today by singing the closing hymn, Freely, Freely, number three. 89. After this worship service concludes, there will be a short video to help you understand the procedures for coming back to church. We can't wait to see you. It has been a long time. Will you bow for the benediction? Now will you hear these words spoken by the prophet Isaiah. The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. May God bless you. Amen.
Hello church, I'm Tom Robbins. I'm one of the pastors here at First Methodist Temple. I am so excited to share with you that our regathering task force has elected October the 11th for our first Sunday back in in-house worship. What that means at that Sunday at 830, the praise service will take place in the Family Life and Worship Center. And then at 11 o'clock, we will have our traditional service also in the Family Life and Worship Center. That's because we have just discovered some maintenance issues that need to be addressed in the sanctuary. I hope that you will be a part of this, but if you have any concerns at all with regard to your health, please don't come. Please stay home and participate. Be a part of our faith family by going to our live stream service. But either way, whether you're here or at home, Let's worship God together and celebrate God's goodness. And if you're coming to church, bring your mask. Hello, church. We're glad to have you all here. Check it out. We're excited that you're going to get to worship with us in there, in person. It's going to be great. But there are a couple of things that we need to do to make sure that everybody stays safe. One is you need to wear a mask. Now, these are awesome masks. You can get one for the youth to support your youth just by contacting youth at fumctemple.org. And if you don't have one, we'll be happy to help you with that. We'd also like to make sure that you know, we want to make sure that you sanitize your hands. Real simple, put your hand underneath, sanitizer comes out, you're good to go. And we want to make sure that you do the social distancing, right? So make sure that you do your best when you sit down in the rows in there to have roughly, make sure you can't touch anybody else's fingertips with both arms outstretched. So that we have roughly the six feet in between families and, and units that come together. So friends, we're excited that you're gonna be here. And if you forget any of these things, we have these awesome stickers on every window so that you won't forget. Friends, we're excited to have you, and we'll see you in there. Oh, hi friends, or hi church, as Kit says. We are going to be so excited to be back in in-person worship in just a few weeks. But you know what? A couple of things you need to remember. Bring your own coffee, because we won't have coffee, and our water fountains are turned off. Secondly, if you have some kids, Great. We've got to have some kids areas out here in the foyer. And then the screens, the TV screens, will be wired to the service so that you'll be able to see the service out there. So remember, bring your own coffee. Hey church, I'm just so excited that we're all going to be regathering again for worship. And so I hope you will find there's plenty of parking out here. And as you park your car, Come on in. I'm going to tell you a couple of things that you'll need to do first. First, don't forget to put your mask on. But then as you come in, you're going to come up here and you're going to be greeted by some wonderful volunteers. And they'll talk you right through what you need to do. First of all, they're going to take you to a little station where they will use a thermometer, a touchless thermometer, and take your temperature. After your temperature is taken, you will go to a sign-in table and you will register yourself or your family and the number of people here for worship. And at that point, then we're ready to go in to worship. Whoa, Miss Laura, you're missing something. Oh, thank you, Pastor Kid. Yeah, no worries. And let me get your temperature real quick. Excellent. Good we'll time. see you in there. All right. Hey, Pastor Brian. Pastor hey, Brian. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, what's going on? We need you to go ahead and make sure that mask is uh, all the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of I'm sure you just forgot. Yeah. Honest mistake. Let me get your temperature real quick. All right. All right. You're perfect. Go on. Friends, I'm so excited uh, to be back together worshiping in person. I hope you'll make plans to come. Uh, and here's what you need to know as you enter the worship space. Uh, you'll be greeted by one of our volunteers and they will escort you and your family uh, to your seat, just like a fine dining experience. Uh, so it's important that all of your family enter the worship space together so we can be sure that you are sitting together. We will have a no contact service, so we'll not have any bulletins. Uh, we will not have any uh, handshaking or hugging. 
And finally, uh, you can place your offering in the basket uh, by the exit as you leave. Okay, so friends, we want you here on October the 11th. Please come. Again, if you have any concerns about your health, just attend the worship service on live stream. But know this, when you come, you will hear the greatest musicians in the history of musicians, the greatest music in the history of music, the greatest prayers said by the greatest prayers of all time, obviously the greatest sermon ever in the history of sermons, and we are worshiping the greatest God in the history of gods. Angels may weep. That is correct. Now, one more thing that I think is very, very important, a way you can support our youth program. Pastor Kit is modeling a magnificent mask. I wanted to charge $89.95 a piece for each of these masks, but Pastor Kit wants to charge $15. So for $15, you can have a designer mask from our church and you will support our burgeoning youth program. And I hope you'll do this. But no, October the 11th is just right around the corner. It's a new world. It's the beginning of the end of all this mess we've gone through. Please come be a part of it. God bless. Bye-bye.